one. Um, I am just gonna set up the live. Um, just give me a minute. I'm just waiting for our guest to join us and then we're going to start the exciting cookbook conversations for the first one of 2024. Hi everyone, hope that everyone's having a good start to the week. Sorry, we're just having a bit of technical difficulties. Hold on one moment. Ooh. Oh dear. So sorry about this. Um, So sorry. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. Just having a bit of technical difficulties here. Oh, hi. Oh, thank you. Hi. Um, it's hi. hi. How are you doing today? I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties. I think it was glitching on my side, which is always the worst when you want to do a live. <laughs> it's absolutely no problem at all. Don't worry. Um, while we're waiting for a few people, I actually just want to grab my book quickly. Yeah. I don't have it to me. <laughs> Let me grab it. There we go. Hi. Oh, yay! yay. <laughs> So I'm just going to kick off then. Um, so today we're kicking off the start of a brand new year with our cookbook conversations. And today we'll be chatting to the lovely author, recipe developer, and lover of all things plant-based, Lizette. Thank you so much for joining us. And please let me know if I did pronounce your name correctly as well. Perfect. You did. It's Leo Z, but everyone calls me Leo, so feel free to call me Leo as well. Perfect. Um, so we're going to be chatting through your latest cookbook, which I am so excited about. It's absolutely beautiful, and I myself am vegetarian, so like having this cookbook and being able to explore these different recipes and someone who loves all things veggies and vegetables has been amazing. Um, do you just want to introduce and tell us a little bit more about yourself before we dive into our questions for today? For sure. Like I said, my name is Leo and I've been vegan for 10 years now on the 1st of January. Actually, I took part in the veganery challenge that's busy running at the moment for those of you who are doing it or interested in doing it. And I learned so much about the various industries and I just felt so good and healthy that at the end of January, I decided to stay vegan for a little longer and then a little longer and a little longer and now it's 10 years later and throughout the past 10 years i i still wanted to dine and eat with my friends and my family so i decided to create vegan recipes that i couldn't find especially south african vegan recipes and i took a lot of my family favorites and veganized those and starting to put it out in the world and eventually i had enough recipes for not just one but two south african vegan cookbooks lovely thank you so much so i'm just gonna go right in. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what inspired the creation of this recipe book? So when I went vegan, I didn't know any other vegans and there also um, wasn't a South African vegan cookbook in stores that was media published. And um, so, like I said, I was really inspired to still 
eat with my family and my friends and I loved hosting dinner parties and so I wanted to create recipes that um, enabled me to to do that and I just had so many ideas I wanted to make veganism mainstream easy I wanted to show people how delicious it can be to eat vegan um, or even just a little bit more vegan or have vegan sides at your events or cater for some of your vegan friends and so I wanted to bring out this cookbook to make it easier for people well specifically South mm. Africans to eat that way amazing Thing. And I know this is probably such a tough question to ask, but what are your three favorite recipes from your latest cookbook? I knew that you were going to ask this question, and it's honestly the most difficult question to answer because I love all 80 recipes in this book. Um, but if I had to choose some of my favorites, it would probably be my babuti. Uh, my peppermint crisp tart and then I've got a peanut noodle recipe that I love it's super easy I love all things peanut butter um, and then if I can throw one extra one in there I've got a mushroom wellington that I make for my family every Christmas I've made it for the past four Christmases and everyone loves that recipe so it has to be one of my favorites as well Perfect. I'm definitely going to be trying that recipe very soon. <laughs> um, and I know a lot in your cookbook, you mentioned that the recipes are very much inspired from um, your family, such as your Omar's health rice, your dad's minestrone, and your mom's iconic broccoli salad. Um, growing up, what were like your favorite dishes to eat? And have you kind of created plant-based versions of those since obviously your journey into veganism? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of my favorite recipes that's actually my first cookbook is um, a lasagna. Lasagna nights were always a special night. It wasn't a quickly eat in front of the TV type of night. We would set the table, we would have a lasagna, the side salad, we would have um, the garlic bread. And then when I was old enough, we would have the red wine to, to go with it. And so that was a really important recipe for me to veganize. And that was my mom's recipe. And then um, my Oma uh, inspired me to cook since I was about three years old. I remember coming home um, from school and there'll be cupcakes and all the different color icings. And we would um, ice the, the cupcakes, me and my brother. And um, she passed away about two years ago. And one of the recipes that I never got to develop with her was her muesli rusks. So that's something that I've always wanted to do. And so with the second cookbook, I dedicated the book to my Oma and the rusk recipes was one of the, the first and most special recipes that I wanted to, to put into the cookbook. Oh, I think that's really so special. I think a lot of people don't realize the connection of food to like family and memory and kind of that nostalgia that it creates and that like true feeling that we have that food brings us. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, with your passion about plant-based food and cooking, what are you hoping that readers will kind of gain from your latest cookbook and take away from it? So my cookbook, obviously, it's great for vegans who want to cook more vegan and be inspired to play around in the kitchen. But I really want the cookbook to serve um, as a guide for people who are more interested in eating plant-based cooking or who are very new to plant-based cooking. Um, the book shows how easy and delicious plant-based cooking can be. And so I'm hoping that that is the, the purpose that it would fulfill. Mm, perfect. That's like leads right on into my next question. But of course, I know it's veganuary at the moment. And with a lot of people kind of experimenting and trying to go a bit more plant-based this month, um, what are three like of your plant-based recipes that you think people who aren't vegan should definitely give a try this month? So let me start off with this. When you are new to veganism or you want to eat more plant-based and you don't know where to start, I think it's really important that you look at the recipes that you you love. Um, most of the recipes that you love can possibly be veganized. And it's really easy at these days in South Africa to find the alternatives that um, you can replace your 
um, products with. So for instance, in my babuti recipe, which is a really, really lovely recipe to make, you can make it in bulk, you can make it for friends and family, and um, you can simply replace the meat or the mince with lentils or with soya mince, it's your choice. And then the custard layer you can replace with chickpea flour, which is a super, super easy ingredient to, to work with. But if you struggle um, to find any of the speciality products, um, I would say go back to the basics, um, like my peanut noodle soup that I mentioned earlier. It is a super, super simple ingredient um, that you use to create a delicious peanut satay sauce, and then it's stir fry veggies and noodles. A lot of the recipes or the foods that we eat already are vegan or plant-based or, or vegetarian and um, you can simply cut out the meat or or replace it but start with definitely with recipes that you love and with um easy simple recipes i think that's like the best kind of advice it's something i also tell people a lot because i've been a vegetarian my whole life and the one thing i always say to people i'm like they always ask me they're like oh isn't it difficult i'm like no it's not a lot of the meals actually are very much plant-based and do have a lot of veggies and it's kind of just taking away that meat and learning to work with different flavors and vegetables so that's lovely thank you um and what is one thing as a plant-based individual that you would say to individuals to encourage them to dip their toes into the world of veganism <laughs> Well, um, as most of you know, eating your veggies is good for your health. Um, mm -hmm. There are numerous studies that show that a, a predominantly whole foods, plant-based diet can prevent and even reverse some of the world's most chronic diseases. And then also a plant-based diet is lighter on um, our food carbon footprint. Um, animal products have quite a heavy carbon footprint in terms of uh, methane gases, land use, water use. Mm -hmm. And so by eating but more plant-based, we can have a positive impact on the environment, not even to mention the positive impact it would have for animals for not eating them. So there are many benefits to eating plant-based. And of course, it's something fun to try mm -hmm. out as well. Perfect. And I know a lot of the recipes, of course, within your beautiful latest cookbook have a lot of strong South African influence. Are there any other cuisines that you took influence from when you were developing some of these recipes? Yes, I love Thai food. So there are a few Thai recipes. Um, and then also, I wanted this cookbook to be a little bit different from your traditional breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. dinner, so we broke up the cookbook in interesting chapters. For instance, I have a kiddies chapter because a lot of people ask me, but what can I feed my, my children that's a little bit healthy and a little bit more, more plant-based? I've got the South African traditional section. I've got a whole food section um, because vegan food as I mentioned before, can be very, very healthy, but um, there are also pro uh, processed products and things like sugar and creams that you can use that's not as healthy. Um, so I wanted to include a whole foods, plant-based um, section. And then it's also very important for me to, to go back to the, the basics. So for instance, a basic, very healthy, creamy, cheesy sauce that I will also share on my Instagram profile this week um, can be used for so many different ingredients. So um, even though it's not a specific cuisine, it is a basic that is really good for you to, to make and to keep and to use in your wraps, in your pastas, on top of your burgers, nachos, in your lasagnas, um, enchiladas. Oh, there's just so many options. So with the cookbook, I wanted to divide the, the sections into areas um, that people would want specific recipes for. Perfect. And then this is the last and bonus question because of course I had to ask this. I was very curious about it. But what is the key to creating an iconic vegan peppermint crisp tart? <laughs> <laughs> so it's peppermint crisp, but obviously peppermint crisp in South Africa isn't vegan. So I had to find a, a very interesting way of creating that 
peppermint inside that's inside the, the chocolate so i use um sugar candy like rock candy that i put in a food processor and you just process it until it's very fine and then you add green food coloring and peppermint essence to create that inside and then it's easy things like all whip is vegan so you can create the the cream mm. layer with with. and to create a caramel sauce you simply boil coconut milk with sugar and it creates this beautiful thick and creamy caramel sauce and then you just layer that sounds delicious i cannot wait to dive into more of these amazing recipes is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we say goodbye <laughs> i would just encourage everyone to to try it veganism is not something strange um even though it's still very niche in south africa um, every single plant-based dish that you consume can have a positive influence on the, the environment, on animals, and even on your health. Don't be scared to, to try it. Maybe. And thank you so, so much, Leo, for chatting to us and sharing so much information, amazing information about this beautiful cookbook. I cannot get over it. And the brightness, the colors, the dishes, everything looks absolutely mouth-watering. I'm definitely going to sp be spending this whole year going through this book. So thank <laughs> you so much. It's a big, big pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We'll chat soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.